Welcome back. It's Sandy here with another whacked out project in the garage. Uh, started working on uh, some welding projects and figured that uh, it's about time that I build a TIG cooler. Initially I was going to buy one from Miller. I have a bunch of uh, Miller equipment. Uh, it doesn't matter what equipment you use, but uh, this thing hopefully will work on anything. If it works, that is. Again, I'm a little ahead of myself. It's optimistic. Um, uh, I think it, uh, as it's going to be apparent that I should have just got, gone out and bought one off the shelf and been done with it, but then again, can't say that, uh, um, that I made it myself, which is half of the fun of doing these projects. So, uh, if you think you're going to get away scot-free and cheap and, um, you can do it, it's not going to come out very well, I don't think. You'll end up with, uh, something that works, um. But uh, when all said and done, I think the Coolmate 1.3 would have been about 630 bucks shipped. Um, I'm probably getting close to that at some point with all the parts and the carts and stuff. Um, but then again, it's not about the cost. This is more about uh, doing stuff with pumps, motors, uh, pressure gauges, valves, and all the stuff that uh, you like to tinker around with. So if you're more into tinkering... Uh, this is a good project for you. If you're into saving money, this probably isn't the way that's going to save you some money, although a lot of the stuff will be applicable if you're going to use one of the uh, carbonator pumps like I used. And there's a lot of different ones out there in a lot of different conditions. Uh, I ended up picking up uh, picking up one off of eBay on actually New Year's Day that nobody was looking at that was brand new for about 160 bucks plus 30 for shipping, and it was brand new in the... Uh, McCain's carbonator box shipped like it was from the factory. And that's worth something because these pumps, as I'm seeing, um, are in various conditions. I've got a, uh, a stack of them now. Again, I'm doing the work for you so you don't have to uh, buy a bunch of these things and figure out that they don't work or why they don't work. Um, today's video just is going to be the uh, overview because I think there's going to be a lot more uh, tedious stuff that I want to take pictures of and put up on the website for details. But I'll give an overview of what I've bought so far and um, things that seem to be a good way to do it and how it's going to work. And then either the second video will have the assembly of uh, how I'm going to put it into a, a cart. And uh, what I'm going to use for a, a cart, basically, to make a welding cart as the next project will be a AV cart with a little cabin on the bottom that the TIG cooler can fit into. So adding that up minus the cost of the, you know, the cart and I already have a cart. So it's not going to save me any money, but it'll be a fun project to do. Like I said, this isn't about saving money, although uh, all of this is applicable to building a low cost TIG cooler. Um, and I'll give you some things that I found out that uh, you should not do because uh, they're not going to work well. And some of the tools and uh, uh, fittings and hoses and stuff that I've gone through uh, again, I, I can't stress this enough, this is not a saving money project, this is a fun project. So let's jump into it with some of the equipment that, uh, that I'm going to use. We'll start over with tubing. Um, I, a couple good sources for most of the parts are going to be uh, a handful of places and you all have access to them. McMaster Car is fantastic for, uh, for tubing, brass fittings, all the clips and, and things like that that you may want to get. Um, and their shipping is inexpensive. They ship almost like next day. So I'm a huge fan of McMaster Car for, for parts like this. Uh, the tubing styles that you'll want to get are um, the one with the braided reinforcement. This, the top one, this is from uh, McMaster Car. It's actually not bad tubing. It's clear. It's flexible. Um, the other tubing... And that's in, in 3 8 ID size, which is one of the main ones that you'll need. This tubing is a translucent one. You'll see this at soda supply stores. Um, and it's, you know, it's not, that, it's not that much more rigid. It's a little um, uglier, I think. Uh, feels a little harder. It's probably, it might actually be a better material. I'm not sure what it's made of. I think the bottom one is PVC. And that, again, is 3 8 ID. The OD is important depending upon your clamp sizes, but generally they'll, you'll, you'll solve that when you get the tubing. And then the smaller tubing is, uh, I think it's 1 8 ID uh, reinforced tubing. This may be problematic, though, for some of the fittings I'm using. Um, but you'll want it, you know, 10, 15 feet of this because you're going to make some mistakes as you're doing your plumbing. And then I think for McMaster car, it's about 85 cents a foot or something, something in that range. And again, they're super, 
super quick shipping. If you don't have a stack of brass fittings, you're going to buy them from them, and they sell them in packs of five, which helps you save a bit of money. Some of the things you can get from them, some of them you can't. Um, so that'll be a little bit of heads up. Um, in the fluid and fitting department, let's go to the next one, and um, I'll show you what this is. This is a, a Deltrol needle valve, and bought this off of eBay for about 15 bucks. It's kind of a kind of a cool part, and let's see if I can shake it out with one hand on the camera. And it's a 3 8 Everything I'm trying to use is uh, 3 8 fittings for the most part. Um, it's basically a needle valve with a nice, like, micrometer type of head. So as you, as you um, spin it, and I don't know if I can with it. Uh, there we go. As we twist the valve, you'll see the, the top pop up a little bit to indicate the number. But you don't need anything this fancy. The needle valve's kind of nice, um, and you'll see how I'm using it. Other people choose to do it a different way. Uh, using spring to regulate pressure. Um, I think this is a much better way, uh, and, and we'll talk about that as we show the pump. But um, again, I found this fancy one on eBay. I bought two of them for $15 each. It's solid brass. Don't get anything steel unless it's stainless steel because, again, this stuff is going to be wet and watery potentially, so you want to want to use some right components. Um, Next in the, we'll, we'll continue going down the fluid and cooling uh, bandwagon, uh, fans. Depending on the type of radiator that you use, and I'll show you what I got. I bought some uh, fans off of eBay, 120 millimeter um, computer fans. These things are available everywhere. They're available in metric and American. It just depends what you're going to do with it. Um, I ended up not going a cheap route. I ended up buying a computer water cooling cooler, and it fits directly with a 120 millimeter fan. So um, for that, I just bought some low cost fans, and I think they were about, gosh, I want to say about 15 bucks each, maybe 27 for the pair shipped or something like that. And they came with the cord. You want to make sure if you get one of these fans that either it comes with a cord or you have the uh, adapter for the fittings or you'll be doing a little soldering. And no big deal. These are 120 volt fans. Um, if they're too noisy or too fast blowing, you can run two of these in series usually to knock the speed way down and uh, make it a lot quieter. I'm not sure if it matters for this because this is in the garage with... Uh, welding coolers and you know pumps going you'll note that the uh, uh this is not going to be the louder part of the loudest part of the system so i got two of those and those basically will bolt right up to this uh to this cooler and this is a basic cooler for high performance water cooled computing from uh, i think it's the uh, oc alpha cool company and i bought this um off of ebay there are tons of them up there this one's really thick it's typically twice as thick as the low-cost ones. The low-cost ones off of eBay are about 20 bucks shipped. I don't know about the quality. The original one I ordered, uh, I got a note from the guy saying that the quality was so bad that he felt bad about shipping it, so I bought this one. Um, this is stupidly expensive for what it is, but it looked cool. It was about 80 bucks. Um, it's copper and brass, not aluminum, so it's a little bit of an upturn. They give you these fancy plugs. The one thing I don't like about a lot of the water cooling components are they use a G one quarter fitting, as you'll see indicated on the box. And it's I think what it ultimately is is uh, some kind of a British standard pipe with an O ring. That's which doesn't make sense to me. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but you have to get the, the special fittings, and we'll show what those are. There's a couple of them that are on here. Um, this cooler came with all the fittings and plugs, so you don't need to buy anything extra. So that's kind of a nice thing uh, than having to source yet another part. But you could get by. Um, my original idea was to use one of my spare oil coolers, but I didn't have one. That was too, they were either way too big, way too costly, or just... Just the form factor wasn't right. I think what I would do is look for a heater core. Um, there's a, you know, you just got to find something that fits your form factor that you like. I looked for a, at the 65 Mustang heater core, which actually is not too bad. They don't look as nice as this, but you could paint them up and, you know, no one's going to see it anyways. This is nice because the fans stack directly on top and they give you hardware for, for bolting them up. And you probably want to bolt the right direction if you're hooking it up. And it makes for a nice tight package, and uh, I think there'll be plenty cooling. I, there's a, a few guys that have been projects with the single width 
uh, 120 millimeter size version of this with half the thickness and they seem to be doing great so this is about four times the capacity of what uh, what the one fellow had and he seems to be doing fantastic with it so that's my choice for a cooler again get creative this is a costly part um, this is the probably the second most costly part in the mix uh, at 90 bucks or so shipped um, you know you could buy a heater core for a car and do a little uh, soldering to get the fittings to fit the hose size for brand new about 30 bucks for almost any heater core for any car that uh, that you desire so again look online uh, ebay is a good spot to see different shapes most of the problems with the heater cores that i saw were like odd looking uh hose uh connections and things and you can fix that stuff up with uh, a hacksaw and uh, some uh, copper plumbing solder, and you're in you're in business. So that's the radiator. Uh, again, that's one of the more costly pieces. Uh, let's go to we'll continue moving this way. We'll well let's catch gauge first. Uh, gauging um, pressure is important on these. You're going to need to set the pressure to some reasonable amount. Most of the carbonator pumps have a bypass spring that's set to keep the pump exploding, but not necessarily to keep uh, the pressure regulated right. So. Um, the way I did is a little different than some, but we'll want a pressure gauge. Uh, pressure gauges are available online. Uh, automotive pressure gauges like this El Cheapo Sun Pro was about 17 bucks from Amazon. Came with a fitting pack. The only thing that's sucky about it is you got to use the um, the fittings that are for oil pressure centers, including the uh, always hated uh, plastic pipe. Um, but for uh, for most purposes in this case it'll be fine we're just we're pumping 50 psi of water so it should be fine and uh removing the the bolt-on housing this will look nice in the the cabinet we'll get to at some point um next on the list of stuff is uh fittings of course these are for the uh, if you do get an automotive gauge make sure you get one that has all the pipe thread adapters that you're going to need typically they'll give you an eighth pipe and uh i think a quarter pipe to connect it up for pressure um, and you'll need this adapter as everything is 3 8 or you can you know you can cobble something together with plumbing part supplies one thing to really remember is that most of the fittings here are plumbing uh, 45 degree style flared fittings they're not the same as AN fittings AN fittings are 37 degree and if you crisscross those type of things people like like I do a box of spare AN fittings um, they're all going to leak because everything that's on the carbonator is um, all these fittings are generally uh, 45 degree flares. Um, so don't mix and match. Stick with the gas line plumbings or brass plumbing fittings are all 45 degree. Um, the next thing that I started going into is well how am I going to hook all this stuff up and um, so I started buying basically I just bought a collection I had some I bought a collection of uh, of parts you'll you may want some T's these are all 3 8 parts that I'm showing you uh, 3 8 uh, nipple these are nice because they have a, a place to crank it down and hold it with a wrench you can get the regular straight pipe to pipe nipples at any hardware store again 3 8 pipe for everything these are fantastic you'll want some of these um, got these from McMaster car they all have a different variant, and you can make, you can get by with, you know, making your shapes and adapters with the pipe nipples and these, or you can buy these fancy ones that have uh, the pipe, three eighths pipe already built into one and that configuration. Um, you know, there's a diff couple different styles, but they basically all do the same thing. This one's actually a really nice one because it's a totally different configuration, and this is actually quite helpful. Um, if you're trying to do some plumbing and, and make everything tight. So think about what you want on these, but usually one of the generic tees and one of these fittings gets you every variant of those fixed uh, fixed brass ones. So that's a that's start keeping that in mind. And again, you can do a lot of that stuff with these type of tees. It just depends how clean and how um, fun you want to make your plumbing project. Uh, more pipe fittings. Um, the angle the 90 degree 3 8 angle again for McMaster car not that much more of a premium than the straight ones the straight ones uh, with the barb fittings like this uh, um, come in a pack of five and I think these are about the same and they aren't that much more but these can come in handy to keep hoses uh, from bending in a weird way a lot of the hose things I think in my project are gonna be pretty tight so um, I've 
picked up a couple extra. These will get used in some project, guaranteed, or I'll make another TIG cooler for somebody else and um, have a bunch of spares. Uh, one thing that's actually kind of nice, and um, I think I got this from from Amazon or one of the soda f uh, supply stores I bought some parts from. It's a uh, one eighth pipe to three eighths barbed, and that's a handy one uh, to use on the gauge. The one of the pressure gauges I originally had, if I can show it to you here, uses that right here, and it's a uh, more of a commercial pressure gauge, not an automotive pressure gauge and it has a three uh one eighth pipe fitting on the back but it has some problems and all uh for using this and uh we'll see that as we fire up the pump towards the end um so that's that's the common brass fittings again don't use any standard steel fittings they'll rust even if you're running coolant uh you know it's just not a great idea to run uh anything that's steel in this system when the brass is not that much more and stainless is even close to the cost of brass. The other things I mentioned are um, the flare fittings for the carbonator tanks and we're using my tank, it, my system was a McCain's uh, Big Mac carbonator and they're really popular on eBay in various conditions. Um, the tanks are nice, I think they're stainless with some coating, they call it diamond coat or some magic uh, trademark thing and it's nice. Um, you don't have to weld up your own uh, tank for it. But the fittings are screwy and some of the other stuff is a little screwy with them and we'll get into that. And I've seen a few people try and plumb these things and it looks like they do it wrong because I tried it and in doing some experimentation it's a really bad way to plumb them up. But one of the things I found was uh, the soda supply places have really inexpensive stainless steel fittings and they're all, they have to be stainless because they're pumping soda fountain syrup through them so they're of good quality and you can get them in the straight and the the 90 degree and that's the basically it's like a, a barb fitting with a flare uh fitting on the inside so they work perfectly they're nice looking the one thing they recommend is these uh little um nylon inserts and the nylon inserts basically go oop i didn't drop them on the floor they basically go if we flip one of the fittings over right inside there and they allow you to get a really nice seal without any leakage and I think for this it might work without it I haven't tried it but I, I had to order parts so you know as part of the waste more money I'll get the right stuff um, a few other bits and pieces for the fittings are reducers uh, 3 8 to 1 8 uh, 3 8 to 5 16 just have them just you know I wasn't sure how I'm gonna plumb the lines to out the front um, and different hose sizes. It's easier just to get a few and build out the order anyways. In for a dollar, you know, in for a hundred, in for a dollar, however the saying goes. I don't know. Anyways, I found these on eBay. Uh, they're uh, standard made in China part. The quality seems fair. There's some oddness to them that I don't like, but they're quick release, and I'll probably use these if I can pop it out with my one hand. And shot shoots out like thing. But basically, it's like an air fitting. They might be useful for some, something else. Um, you know, get creative. Whatever you get, just make sure they're stainless and or brass because um, you'll need you'll need to run water and coolant through these things. Um, these ones are nice because there was a kit available for three. Uh, they were like twenty bucks for the three, and there's one for each color, which oddly is appealing if you're doing welding because hot, cold, and gas, or however you want to do it. But the problem is. This is some sort of a smaller than uh, standard uh, fitting. So it's a, I'm guessing a metric size or something like that. And it's a little loose in the 1 8 uh, pipe that I have. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to seal it under pressure. Uh, the return lines won't be a big deal. But the pressure port um, with 50 PSI or so on it, um, I'll have to see how we're going to do that. But I like these. I like the idea of the quick disconnect. I have a couple of welders and a couple of different torches. And, uh, you know, why not? We're, we're making something fun, so let's make it kind of cool. And we'll, the other part that shot out is the part that you, you attach to your TIG torch. And you can buy replacements for these on eBay. They're all over the place, and they're <clears throat> relatively inexpensive. Um, hose clamps are another area uh, of concern for people. Um, I kind of like these ones. You grab them with a the plier or the right tool. They're steel, uh, so eventually they will get wet and rust. The plastic ones... I thought I was gonna like them, but they're so freaking huge compared to the pipe. They're even just they're just in in the way. And whatever you got, even hose clamps work great. Whatever you got, if you're saving some money, um, I took it upon myself to waste yet even more money 
uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, the, they're Odeker clamps, and they're basically a stainless steel 360 degree clamp that um, you crimp with this magic tool that yet costs even more money for the project. And it basically just pinches them tight in a circular, uh, it makes a nice circular clamp, and it, it just pinches that uh, that little ridge tight and does a nice nice clamp and they're really low profile and they're not sharp they don't hurt the tubing and they're rel the, they're relatively uh, relatively inexpensive except for the tool uh, again you want to make sure you get the stainless steel ones I bought a kit that has like a every size made and we'll only use one and you know the rest will sit on the shelf but that's that's some of the fun and stuff that I like doing in these projects being able to buy a new tool for the project projects uh projects worth it so that's that's pretty much it in the fittings department um there's a few other things before we jump into the actual tank and i'll show you what some of the other parts i have on the shelf and one of them was this uh fancy dancy schmancy uh computer water cooler indicator like uh, like the millers and and the other brands have they have usually this wheel that spins when water flows indicating uh, you're not going to burn down your torch because there's no liquid flowing um, these things are super cheaply made i would not use these on the pressure side i don't think they would take 50 psi um, i would not be comfortable with that because you'll be doing it and it'll just pop although they look like it's you know some kind of glued together thing but again uh not instilling any sense of safety or uh, durability but this will work fine in the intake port to the pump i've tried it um, in both sides on the return line and in the intake and it seems to be okay both of those are lower pressure than the main line output and we'll see that once we get into doing an actual build this one also uh, again price wise was about ten dollars or twelve bucks i think uh, it comes with a digital temperature gauge, so if you have a 12-volt power supply, you can actually show the um, the temperature of the water heading into the pump, which would be the cool side, since it's post-cooler uh, and storage tank. So this is a, an interesting idea. It could be a little too fancy for me. Um, I'd have to add another 12-volt power supply to power it up. It uses computer cords, but I think it says it'll run from 8 to 12 volts. So a small adapter would, would power it up. And it's backlit and has a little fancy display. If you look at these online on eBay, you'll see what they look like. Again, it might be just too much of a pain in the ass to deal with and um, less rugged than I'd like to be. So that's, that's some of the stuff. There's another one on that we'll show you as we go through. Um, some of the parts that are spares... I'll show you where they come from, and they're actually useful if we are building a low-cost build. These are parts that are taken out, um, and I think they're the last. Uh, the last thing is um, the filter. I, there's no reason not to have one. Let's say that for the cost. Um, I bought this one, I think, from Amazon, and when I do the website, I'll put links up to most of the parts that I got so you can see where I got it, and then if you want to buy it from them or find your own source, knock yourself out. Um, this is actually a much larger one that's probably needed. Uh, filter, they never tell you the rating, and I did a little research. Uh, this particular one's rated at 100 PSI, which is great. Uh, I think that's well in line with the uh, output of the pump to the torch. And, uh, again, you can see some of the fittings I just threw in there for, for the heck of it to mock up th some things up. But it's a nice uh, nice stainless steel fitting, uh, nylon housing, I believe, for the bottom part. Um, and they're in various different colors and different materials, so be careful uh, if you're just buying some. See if you can find the pressure rating. Um, and the pressure does degrade with temperature. Fortunately, this is on the cool side. Uh, the screen's replaceable. This is an 80 mesh, which... Um, they make a finer one, but uh, I would have had to order. Uh, I would have had to order from the manufacturer, which required a minimum like thirty dollar order to get the additional part. And to be quite honest, this is going to be plenty good. But having it's going to be better than not. And most people don't run them, so you know what the hell. We'll we'll, we'll put this into the mix. And um, it's you know I think it was about. I want to say about $17, maybe. Uh, I can't even remember, but I'll put the links up for that once I get this up on the website. So this is the, the filter, the optional, totally optional. I think if you have clean water, uh, maintain your system. It's probably not needed. I think the Coolmates, some of them have them, a smaller version of this. Some of them don't. I don't know what the other brands do, but um, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to try using. And again, all the... 
Uh, they're available with 3 8 pipe or with nipples. The nipples seem like they'd be a, a point of failure, uh, a little more flimsy, but it does, again, save the cost of fittings. But since I had so many fittings, I opted for the 3 8 pipe. Seems a little more durable to me. And now let's get into the actual the carbonator tank and, and the system that I got. Again, this is a McCain's uh, Big Mac carbonator. And this... Uh, all the junk on it ignore uh, most of it's mine, but the, basically it's a pump uh, motor with a uh, Procon pump, and these are uh, super popular on eBay. If you need a replacement, you can get them. I'd advise getting a rebuilt one or a new one and not screwing around because it's probably seen a lot of service. I've taken uh, uh, one apart that was bad from uh, from another style purchase that I'll show in another video. Uh, and we'll actually do a rebuild because uh, I got the rebuild kit for it. But this one was, uh, as I said, a brand new carbonator with the tank. And the tank's, I think, a little over a gallon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, it's a good size tank for, for, for me in home use. Uh, I'm not welding 300 amps um, for 12 hours. Basically, I have a, a Dynasty 200DX. Runs 200 amps at the top end, and what the hell am I welding that's going to need all that juice? So, again, this is more of a fun project than a needed project. But this is a great part because it has a mounting plate. The newer ones are made out of plastic. The older ones you might find are stainless steel. Watch out for motor voltage. Some of the ones with stainless steel plates are 220 motors, so be careful there. Ask questions to the buyer. Um, don't take anything for granted because it's eBay and you will get screwed. So uh, be careful. Take your time. Find one that you like. Find one with a good guarantee. And like I said, this one was brand spanking new. So I was pretty confident that uh, I was going to get something that was all right. And again, uh, not have to pay for any repair parts or pump pieces later on down the road because um, the pumps do have a finite uh, life. And it's been sitting under a counter for five years when they yanked it out when the seals went, which is typically the problem that I'm, that I'm seeing online. Seals go out and while the pump works, they leak. And you can't have this stuff leaking coolant or water in your system, especially while you're dealing with electricity and stuff. Just a big old mess. But the tank on it is, again, it's a nice piece. You don't have to fabricate this. I believe it's stainless, but it looks to have some kind of odd finish. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's some sort of a coating, bright coating. I don't know what it is. Um, where I think you have to be careful with these tanks are is to make sure that you have the fittings that work with them. I've seen guys try and use... Uh, some of the wrong fittings and they have air leaks and you can't have any suction leaks into this pump or what you'll get is a lot of bubbles in your system and uh, probably not going to be something that y you want to do and running through your torch. Um, it might be, you might even actually feel it. So um, hard to say. The other thing that I started looking at was there's a lot of fittings on this style. There's another style that McCain makes. It's a small, short one, a, a compact version. And I really like it, but it has some different problems. And uh, the first of all, the pump that I got with it was blown, so I have to rebuild it or uh, replace the pump. And I did buy two brand new pumps off of eBay uh, for $50 a pump, so I have spares uh, for other projects, which I'm not sure why or what, but again, uh, let me do the wasting money for you guys. Um, but the tank fittings are really, uh, really tricky. And there's a lot of fittings up here. And as you'll see, they do a nice job using uh, flared fittings on this. And I like that. However, these, again, are not AN fittings. If you take a look at it, you, you can kind of see that it's a, uh, a steeper angle. But it's, it's not compatible with AN fittings or uh, your typical race car fittings. They use... Uh, these are... Uh, fittings that are designed for water and um, brass typically and gas fittings all are 45 deg degree flares. The second part of the problem is while you might think that these fittings just dump into the tank, they don't. In this particular fitting with the X above it, and you'll see that I marked these out um, with uh, some marking so I didn't forget the next day when I came in and started working again. Um, the fittings with an X are just not usable for much of anything um, for various reasons. We'll start with this one. This is really important. This one is, I think, the carbonator input. And if you could see, and I'll take pictures for the website once we get going, this is a 3 8 flared fitting, but the inside of it is restricted to uh, probably a 30-second hole. And I don't, there's no way you can see through the video, I don't think. But it's a really tiny hole. In addition to having a really 
really tiny hole, and which means high restriction. It goes through the internals of the tank and shoots out basically water through a pipe out to here, which is not really where you want water coming back in if this is your pump intake. It's, I think, designed to carbonate the water. That's the ultimate input for the CO2, potentially. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I would expect it. So you can't use this for, for putting pressure back into the tank. Um, you could, but it's going to be highly restrictive and probably not a great thing. When I put the pressure gauge, uh, when I fed pressure back here directly, I think I had about 100 PSI of static pressure from the pump only pushing through this. And that's not really the case when you're running it through the torch. But remember, if we have quick disconnect fittings and we leave both fittings out, that's like a static dump uh, load on the pump. No water's flowing anywhere, so all the water has to be able to get back to the bypass uh, through the bypass to the tank without restriction. Uh, the other thing is you don't ever want to have a lot of pressure in your system when using this uh, uh, these type of computer radiators because I'm not sure what the rating is. It may be rated to 20 pounds or, or who, kn who knows. So I don't have a high confidence that this will take a full 100 PSI or more or less, you know, what ranges. So be safe. Don't expect these things to hold a lot of pressure. Even though it looks like a well-made part, uh, some of them are just really garbage, cheaply made. So don't expect a lot out of them. For what You get what you pay for, as they say. So that's one of the fittings. This bottom fitting should not really be used. Most of these fittings don't even need to be capped, but... Um, I had a uh, a brass fitting that was for a, for some kind of water cap or something, so I just threw it on there. This next fitting is a uh, this this actually might be the carbonator uh, input, but I can't again. I'd have to look at the directions again. But this has a ball valve in it and is a one way valve, and again, it's highly restricted. It could kind of be used if you you take the ball bearing out of it. Uh, for something in, you know, I would say better not to if you don't have to, but this one could be used. I can't remember if this one also feeds through the carbonator port through a, uh, a set of tubings inside, but it wasn't super high flowing. Again, it's put the little plastic cap on that came with it and leave it, a little, leave it alone. The next one uh, with the not usable, which I thought I would be able to get... Um, uh, get some use out of was the blow-off valve. Since we're not making any pressure in the tank, it's not really needed. Um, I'm going to, in fact, vent the tank anyways, and I thought I could just pull this out and it would yet have another flared fitting, but it doesn't. It has a, uh, it's it's tight, I can't pull out. It has like a weird nipple that can't be used for much of anything, so just leave it and know that you can't really do much with it, and if for some reason you get over 200 pounds in the tank, it's going to pop off. If it does, you've already blown half of the other parts and hose works and things that are that are going here, so don't don't even worry about it. The the two main ones, and the nice part about this particular carbonator was it has two tubes, uh, two inputs that were um, basically siphon tubes, and that's what I've marked the S's. These have a tube that goes right down to the bottom of the tank, so you don't even have to deal with um, you don't really have to deal with trying to. Uh, uh, put a tube in for the siphon pickup or some fancy thing. It's all done for you. Same for this one. These are equivalent in, in their manual. They say these are both, I think, water output or carbonation output for the fountain system. But both of these have a siphon tube that goes to the bottom of the tank, and I tried both of them, <clears throat> and they seem to work okay. Um, some of the stuff I've already done and got ahead of a little is, uh, this is a gasket for this, and I'll just chuck this out of the way as I show it. I made a new uh, cover plate with a fitting and I was going to use this as a be able to stick a small piece of wood down there to check water levels and put a cap on it or use it as a return but basically I just took a chunk of aluminum and sliced it and then made it uh, shiny because because uh, I'm a nut job and I had nothing else to do for an hour like you guys know. Um, the tank itself is basically just a nice wide opening there's some odd fittings that you have to remove here um, they're basically uh, uh, I don't know if we have them here sitting around here. Here we go. Um, they're basically a a stainless uh, thing like that. And part of that connects up to this mechanism. Ignore the piping that I have on the bottom there. Uh, there's a, They all look like this. And inside of here is a float system inside of a stainless steel capsule. You'll want to use this if you don't have a cap. It's actually pretty good. The fitting, the port size when you take it apart... Um, is usable as uh, a feed-in. I'm going to use this for the micro uh, carbonator that I have. I was just throwing it here so you guys can see it. But inside, there's this 
system that looks like this and this has a tube that's about six inches long I chopped it off because I was going to use it initially as the cap and just put it on upside down like this so I didn't have to make something and have a little breather and again this isn't we're not worried about water leaking out we're not sloshing this thing all over if you are um, then you might want to put a cap on a small breather uh, the the setup originally has this inside and inside of here there's a small float system that uh, uh, this mechanism has some electronics that turns the motor on and off. Unfortunately, it's exactly backwards for what we would want. Um, we would want this to have the motor turn off when the tank gets empty or too low. Uh, this has it, the motor turns off when the tank gets full. So we couldn't really use that, but the parts are usable. So if you're saving some bucks, you can use this, uh, this as a lid, use the gasket, just put it upside down, put a little curly cue, a hose on it, and you're good to go. Um, you can also do the same with... Uh, with the housing once you gut it out and you have to cut I'll give you a little tip this is plastic it's all molded you have to slice it with a razor knife and this is an aluminum or pot metal piece that uh, uh, works great and there's a fitting I think it's a uh, 9 uh, I know it's a dash 8 fitting will fit onto that but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later uh, my solution is just to make a little thing with a fitting. And if I have to have a different return, I can just drill and tap that for a 3 8 pipe or something and uh, good to go. Right now I just uh, stuck a, uh, I think it's a just a dash 4 fitting on there that I'll be able to stick a piece of wood, like a small dowel in to check water level now and again. But that's the, that's the overview of the tank. Again, you can see some of the hoses in the clamp. These are just mock-ups. Um, I accidentally got the wrong hose from one of the soda dispensers. This clear stuff is is the super duty thick stuff and it's good to 60 PSI. I would not recommend this for using anything other than on the intake side of the pump. Um, these pumps can push out a lot of pressure. Um, and in addition that these were designed for cooler temperatures than potentially what these will sing. So if it's clear, you probably don't want to use this on any pressure side. The nylon reinforced stuff is the stuff you want to use. And again, this is just mocked up right now. I was getting the pump working and seeing what leaks and how I want to configure some things and seeing if I could regulate the pressure with, um, with the valve. So let's take a quick view of this. We're getting long in the tooth for the video and I'll probably edit out a whole, hopefully can edit out a bunch of this. Uh, if I wasn't speed talking um, let's do the last couple of bits of the, the motor the motor and wiring for these are interesting they give you a fitting that um, you would plug into uh, this fitting would plug into the pressure safety valve so when the tank fills it shuts off and this goes back into the motor the motor then has a regular AC power cord that comes out that you would just plug into the wall. Um, this is an okay situation if you just jumper these uh, the right wires you'll turn the motor on and I just threw a, uh, a GE industrial switch uh, on a pigtail to be able to do that for testing and the fittings are nice they're somewhat watery proof looking but I think what's going to end up happening is uh, uh, ultimately I'm going to have to just cut the cord and uh, pull this you pull this two screws out you can get to the plate and just basically pull two wires out for the motor so I can run the switch um, and other stuff off of a, a power circuit that would be inside the box but the uh, the overall wiring is pretty straightforward nothing magical about that again just double check you get a, a 120 volt motor or if you're in a place where they're running 220 then get the 220 version but they're specific to the voltage they don't have they're not dual voltage um, the pump we talked about is the let's see smell though. this one is the one that came with it it's a it's they're called procon pumps um, they're basically ubiquitous. Every carbonator that you'll ever see will have some variant of this pump on it. Um, there's a few oddball brands that have some weird gear pumps and stuff, but uh, I would highly, highly recommend getting something with this pump because you can get parts for it. Um, they're easy to fix and they're, seem, you know, they're simple and simple to operate and fix. And that's, uh, you know, what else do you want? Here's what the pump looks like. Um, from the back side, if it was to connect, this connects up to the motor through a basically a slotted drive, and you can see that the clamp just holds them two together. Nothing magical or fancy. Um, this one is a replacement 
pump that was sent to me for the pump that was bad and we'll probably rebuild the other pump this is actually in nice shape um, they don't often look that nice and it, you gotta check a few things when you get these pumps um, they have these weep holes if there's any rust or weepiness in them or the bearings are unsmooth looking the pumps bad the seals are gonna go and you've wasted your money so be careful about that stuff um, the the rest of the system here is just some some mocked up plumbing to see how it works and um, we'll uh, we'll we'll turn this thing we'll turn this thing on and uh, I'll leave this off because it's going to just vibrate anyways. But the pump the pump's kind of noisy, uh, probably be a little noisier on the video camera. So I don't know if I'll be able to how how I can talk if I can turn it on again with one hand. Um, that's the pump. That's the pump on. And I'm talking, it's, it's, you know, it's moderately loud. Inside a box, it'll be better. Um, I have the other pump when I tried it. Uh, it was a little quieter. And I think the motors are just not great quality these days. And depending on what motor you get, they may be a little noisier or a little quieter. Um, the main flow in this system is basically intake here and into this. And this is where I'm comfortable in using one of these uh, computer-like uh, flow indicators. If you look at it, you, you know, there's various types. This one, just the wheel spins a little. I don't even know how I would mount this in a case so you could see it, but it's it was something to try, see if there's any issues or leaks. Again, these are not the greatest quality. This one was about 12 bucks. Um, I don't even have any fittings on it since it's on the intake side of the pump. This is the intake side of the pump, and you'll see um, there's a little arrow, if, you, if I can get around to it, a little arrow that indicates flow. That one flows out. So the intake's just spinning the wheel. I would, again, not use that on the outside pressure side of the pump or expect it to explode at some point. Um, the output is teed off right now, and one of the outputs would normally go to your, your torch, um, but I just have it going to the pressure gauge. And you can see a little bit of the needle vibrating, and that's some of the issues of using a, uh, a regular gauge. It's a little more sensitive to the pressure differences in the pump and it's also vibrating a little because it's just sitting on the, uh, the whole mechanism but most of the TIG torches are in the 45 to 50 ranges from what I see online uh, this is a nice panel mount I got that off of eBay for like $17 same price as an automotive gauge I actually like the automotive gauge better without uh, um, with, with the exception of the fittings you have to use the next thing that we have is the bypass and this is where it gets a little different some guys use the the bypass spring in the pump to adjust pressure I think it's a really bad idea these pumps come shipped with a spring set to 250 psi and I think it's really problematic to mess with that unless you get the spring for 100 psi and if it does bypass through this pump all that means is the water circulates in the pump so it's not effectively doing any cooling it's just circulating water and that doesn't flow through your torch. So the better way to do it, in my opinion, is we bypass some of the water back to the tank. Or, an even better way would be bypass this back to the cooler itself. So as water recirculates, we can recirculate against the cool, we can recirculate through the cooler. So the output of the bypass should also go through the cooler. So more of the water is probably gonna go through the the bypass and the torch anyways so let's not put it to uh, let's put it to some good use now I mentioned before that the valve uh, controls the pressure so right now what we're doing is basically we have a, a dead head there's no place for the water to go except through the bypass so the pressure gauge is showing the current pressure setting and the rest of the water is just going back through the fittings into the tank normally this return we go to the radiator and uh, same for the return to the from the torch. But what we can do with this now is we can adjust the pressure based on how much restriction we put in to the bypass valve. So right now we're taking out restriction. And if we want to raise the pressure to put more water through the torch, we would just crank this up to 45, 50 psi. And again, you can see the jittery needle of the jittery me uh, meter needle. And I think a lot of that is just a uh, uh, fairly sensitive gauge. It might even been uh, designed for air pressure, so it's you know it's what it is. But the pump's working fine. Um, the output of that again just goes right back to the tank, and that's why you can't have any restriction in these fittings. This fitting is way too restrictive to put the bypass into. 
So again, you want to keep the pressure out of the return and out of the torch return and um, and keep that side of the system low. And that's pretty much the that's pretty much the pump. If I can there we go. So that's the uh, 45 minute overview of um, of my project and I'm at the point now where I can start doing some final plumbing and uh, assembly of how I think things are going to work out. About the only thing that I have to solve is the uh, fitting size, the hose for this fitting size and if I don't end up finding something then I'll just have to use regular brass fittings for uh, for the TIG torch that require the non-quick disconnect style. And that's it. Hope you've uh, survived the 45 minutes or so of this. And uh, questions, send them. And I'll put up the link to the website, which won't have any projects yet because it's going to take me a while to do that. But at least you can watch along and start building your own. Have a great day and get those projects done.